In today's video, we are going to talk about abdominal girth. Four years ago, when I first became a new grad nurse, I had to measure a patient's abdominal girth. And a seasoned nurse on the unit was nice enough to show me how to do it, but the unit was a little too busy for her to explain the reason behind it and why abdominal girth is measured in certain patients. So today, we are going to break down the importance of measuring abdominal girth in particular patients. So let's just jump right in. So the measurement of abdominal girth is a very common nursing assessment in which measuring tape is taken to measure the size and circumference of a patient's abdomen. The measurement is done right at the widest part of the abdomen, so usually at the umbilicus or the belly button. So the nurse will put a small mark on the skin of the patient's abdomen, usually using a pen or skin safe marker to mark the spot where the measurement was taken. Again, this is usually at the belly button or the umbilicus, but there's a reason that we do this. So let's just say you are the nurse working today and you measure your patient's abdomen with the measuring tape at one spot, but the nurse that works after you will measure the patient's abdominal girth at another spot. If you two both measure at slightly different places, the results could be off even if the size of the patient's abdomen has not changed. And it would actually make it hard to tell if the patient is getting better or worse. So by marking the exact spot on the skin of the patient's abdomen, it makes it much easier for the nurse to go back to that same spot each time. Making the measurements more accurate and more consistent. Now, of course, we don't just go around measuring every patient's belly. We do this for specific patients, such as patients with liver failure, heart failure, patients with cancer that has spread to the abdomen, as well as patients with an intestinal blockage or obstruction. Also, the NICU nurse may measure and monitor the abdominal girth of a preterm baby with a feeding intolerance. So there are different situations in which we measure a patient's abdominal girth. So let's talk more about each of these patients, starting with the patient with liver failure. So it will be a common nursing assessment for you to measure the abdominal girth of a patient with liver failure, liver cirrhosis, tumors of the liver, or hepatitis. But let's talk about why. Remember that the portal vein carries blood from the intestines, the stomach, and the spleen and drains into the liver. But patients with liver failure, cirrhosis, hepatitis, or tumors of the liver have scarred tissue. When the liver is scarred, blood flow becomes blocked because blood can't easily flow through scarred tissue. This causes high pressure not only in the portal vein, but in the entire portal system, leading to something called portal hypertension. So this high pressure in the portal system and blockage of blood flow is going to cause fluid to leak out of the blood vessels into, you guessed it, the abdominal cavity. This is actually a clinical complication called ascites, in which there is a collection of fluid inside of the peritoneal cavity causing visible abdominal swelling. Now you've probably learned in nursing school that ascites is pretty dangerous Reason being is because ascites can lead to respiratory complications such as shortness of breath. This is because fluid in the abdomen pushes the diaphragm upward, limiting your patient's lung expansion. As a result of this, this patient may also have difficulty breathing when lying flat. Now that you have an understanding as to how liver failure affects the size of the belly, let's talk about treatment and how abdominal girth also plays a big role in guiding care. So usually patients with ascites are placed on a low sodium diet as well as diuretic therapy. The nurse will measure abdominal girth to monitor how the patient is responding to treatment. So once treatment begins and the nurse sees that the patient's abdominal girth is decreasing, this means that treatment is effective and the patient is responding well to the low sodium diet and diuretic therapy. If the nurse is measuring the patient's abdominal girth and sees that the patient's abdomen is not decreasing in size or staying the same, this means that they are not responding to treatment. So typically the next step would be a paracentesis in which a needle is inserted into the abdominal cavity to remove the fluid. Now in very rare cases, if the patient isn't responding to a paracentesis, the patient will undergo something called a Denver shunt. 
shunt. And this is a procedure in which a catheter or shunt is inserted into the peritoneal cavity to redirect the abdominal fluid back into the bloodstream. Now, please understand that ascites is mostly seen in patients with liver failure, cirrhosis, hepatitis, or tumors of the liver. But it may also be seen in third spacing, myocarditis, pulmonary hypertension, chronic pancreatitis, pelvic organ prolapse, ovarian cancer, or alcohol dependency. So you may be required to measure the abdominal girth of these patients as well. If you have a patient that has been diagnosed with right-sided heart failure, as the nurse, you may be required to assess this patient's abdominal girth. But let's discuss why. In right-sided heart failure, the right ventricle of the heart isn't strong enough to pump blood into the lungs. Because of this, blood will start to back up in the rest of the body, especially in the lower extremities and the abdomen. Of course, we know that this can manifest as pitting edema of the legs, but fluid can also move into the abdomen, causing visible swelling or ascites. As we discussed in our patients with liver failure, that abdominal fluid can press up against the diaphragm, making it hard for the patient to breathe. So of course, as the nurse, we would monitor the abdominal girth of this patient to monitor how much fluid is accumulating. If the abdominal girth of the patient is increasing, then this means that the patient may not be responding well to treatment or their condition could simply be getting worse. Now, on the other hand, if the abdominal girth decreases, that is a positive sign that the patient is responding well to treatment. So again, this is a great example of how abdominal girth measurements help us to track fluid status, treatment effectiveness, and changes in the patient's condition. And then there is abdominal cancer. So as we stated earlier, we would also measure the abdominal girth of a patient who has cancer that has spread to the abdomen. Cancer that has spread to the abdomen can lead to a buildup of fluid in the abdomen called malignant ascites. This can happen because cancer cells can irritate the peritoneal lining, block lymphatic drainage, or even disrupt the integrity of blood vessels. For these patients, we may measure abdominal girth to monitor the rate of fluid accumulation and monitor the effectiveness of treatment such as chemotherapy, aparacentesis, or diuretic therapy. Now again, we may also measure abdominal girth for the patient with an intestinal blockage or obstruction. And intestinal obstruction occurs when there is an interference with the normal movement of content through the GI tract. So of course, if content isn't moving through the GI tract, that content is staying in one place, leading to the accumulation of gas, fluid, chyme, waste, and other intestinal content. This causes the patient abdominal distension and discomfort. So as the nurse, you may measure abdominal girth to establish a baseline before inserting an intestinal tube or NG tube. And last but certainly not least, the neonatal ICU nurse may monitor the abdominal girth of a preterm newborn. This is because preterm babies often have difficulty digesting feedings due to the small size of their stomachs. Monitoring abdominal girth helps the nurse to monitor how the baby is tolerating and digesting feedings. So if the NICU nurse measures the preterm newborn's abdominal girth and notices it has increased, this could indicate a feeding intolerance. It also suggests that the baby should receive more frequent but smaller feedings. Now this is a very important piece of information. Abdominal distension in newborns can lead to respiratory difficulty, vomiting, and regurgitation. So tracking abdominal girth helps the nurse to identify problems early on. Now let's just say that the preterm newborn has been fine, but the NICU nurse notices a sudden increase in abdominal girth, rising gastric residuals, or if the NICU nurse notices that more than two milliliters per kilogram of feeding is returned before the baby's next feeding, it should definitely be reported immediately. These could be early signs of necrotizing enterocolitis. This is a dangerous intestinal condition that mainly affects preterm infants. 
So measuring abdominal girth in these tiny ones are very important. So as you can see, monitoring abdominal girth is a very important nursing assessment. Not only does it help the nurse to detect changes and disorders early on, but it also gives the nurse insight into how the patient is responding to treatment. If you found this video helpful, please be sure to share it with a friend, classmate, or teacher. Please be sure to give this video a thumbs up. Remember to never give up and as always, thanks for watching.